Morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Clifford Stone. I was a Sergeant First Class, United States Army. I had a secret clearance with nuclear surety. I could get the clearance that I needed to do whatever it was that was necessary for me to do at the time on special operations when I was called in on those. What I'm referring to here is that I was involved in situations where we actually did recoveries of, tra of crashed saucers, for lack of a better term, debris thereof. There were bodies that were involved with some of these crashes, also some were alive. While we were doing all this, we were telling the American public there was nothing to it. We were telling the world there was nothing to it. I'd like to go into detail on some of the cases about the nuts and bolts cases right here, but I will be available if you have any questions concerning my involvement in this. You can talk to Dr. Greer to arrange for me to get to talk to you. But the whole situation is we've set back, we've told the American people that there's no such thing as UFOs. I've been involved where we have recovered these objects. We know them to be of extraterrestrials. In 1969, I had an event that happened to me while I was stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia. We went to Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. That would be my first exposure to any time that we would be recovering an unidentified flying object. When we went there, we already had people that was already in the, in the facility. We were a backup team, which was supposed to be NBC because there was supposed to be some nuclear materials that was on board this craft. Later on, most people involved would have been, were, were to be told that there was nothing on board. It was nothing more than just a crash of one of our aircraft. I know better because I was one of the people that approached it with a Geiger counter to get surface readings. I was the first person to go ahead and see that there were bodies on it. That would be the first of approximately 12 events. UFO crashes are not events that take place every day. They're rare. I know we're not alone in the universe. I know that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It's evidence that has been denied to the American people. I stand before you today in my almighty God and I tell you this, if Congress calls me in and says, will you testify in detail what you know, I stand here today prepared and ready to do just that. Governments must never lie to the people for no reason. Thank you. So I think my, my question is actually to, my question is to Clifford Stone. You, you said that you had seen aliens on a or a craft that had crashed. I wondered if you could describe what they looked like. I could. I could, but it would probably take a whole lot of time. The reason I state that, when I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference, except for some of the things that uh, they might be able to go ahead even in a dark room and touch an object and go, go ahead and identify what color that object might be. They would have a heightened sense of smell, sight, uh, hearing. Uh, the uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were, uh, the unique thing I th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. Now this created a situation where the scientific community was trying to figure out why that would be the case. Because you would expect that if life evolved on other planets that they would take on some type of other uh, being, so to speak. Not necessarily look humanoid or be bi bipedal such as we are. But apparently, we got quite a few of the species out there that are humanoid in appearance. And that creates a question that yet has to be answered by science. Uh, yes, and I'm, as I call on you, please state the news agency that you were with. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Deanne Divis with United Press International.